it's time for some girl talk i love girl talks because i am the queen of unpopular opinions hey y'all hey 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 okay i really want to come on here and talk about a few stories that have just like really like i'm one of those people that i get online i don't just read the stories i go to the comment because i'm like a person a people studier so I like to see like the masses and how they're thinking, you know, and if it lines up and, you know, resonates with my intuitive thoughts or my own personal feelings before I even read anybody else's. So I like to go to the comments. I like to click on people's, find all the information about the people. Then I'm going to his mom and sister's cousin page to see how she feels about it. That's just how I am when it comes to searching and blogs and just stuff like that which is why i typically try to stay off of it but there's been a few stories a few topics just a few things that just they've been on my mind heavy okay and i'm queen of unpopular opinions judge yo mama but let's get right into it so there was this thing called rose credit repair she was just caught up on a 3.3 million dollar credit scheme and for me it's just so crazy because first of all we have this hair group here i want to put the name on it because i don't want to bring no extra cloud in it tonight day, you know? <laughs> there's a hair group here and whatever you need like they literally are in the hair group cpn numbers if you don't know it research it um who can do me this credit application uh people sell the the different scamming tactics and how to get half off all your groceries and it's just everything you know like you can ask somebody to make you fake check stubs fake covid tests and these are just all regular people that somewhat finesse the system because these are people that are just using the resources available pretty much to get over on the system but these are typical things like you know when people go and get apartments they may get fake check stubs not that they don't make any money but they may just need especially in this economy like you might just need to make five thousand dollars a month in order to get the apartment that you want but instead you only make 400 something so some people they go and seek these options out right so it's kind of the mindset when i think of the lady that you know rose credit repair the lady that got in trouble with the government but okay so a little bit of background on the story she basically was taking in people teaching them how to repair credit there's credit repair places everywhere on social media they teach you how to dispute things anyway she's in hot fire because not only did she assist people in fixing their credit quickly like these are people that within three to the six months we're seeing different results and as we are brought up we know that credit you don't damage it because it's super hard to fix so these are all people that went to her knowing what credit was and the the repair process and for her to promise these times and stuff i kind of feel like all of these people pretty much knew that it can be legitimate but there was maybe something shady going on for these quick results you know and so anyways what she was technically doing is taking these people and she was disputing things on their credit rightfully so she basically would send in fake police reports saying that you know the debt was her credit card was stolen this debt is not accurate you know this was from identity theft which okay it is a crime i get it you're faking government documents it's major but it's just so crazy the people in the comments and saying all this stuff and she deserves this and why would y'all da 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 it's like first of all she ch she scammed the government to help individuals and she did have her own little issues with individuals like some individuals left on her her site that you know they didn't uh they didn't get the, the results that they desired and she withheld their social but with that you got to kind of tread lightly because when it comes to businesses like this and you promise people that you will you know not even promise them you you leave the idea that i'm not a miracle worker i can just do what i can do and if they don't get the results that they expect from that i still did my job you know so i get when people try to come in maybe that was her way of saying you know i'm not gonna do work for free remember i have all your if you try to go dispute a 700 dollars transaction and because you're not getting the results quick enough or in the way that you desire them you feel like you're gonna report me remember i got your information 
So, you know, I kind of get it like that type of vibe. But, you know, it's just so many women that were just under the comments and blah, 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 blah. And she needs to be under the jail. And it's just like, this is what a lot of y'all do using fake documents. A lot of people are lying to get certain government, you know, money. A lot of people did it with the loans. Like, people do it. So, just to see these same people, and I know a few of them are the same people, throw her under the bus. And then, of course, the government incentivizes other people to throw her under the bus because if she repaired your credit, you don't let us know, we're going to throw you under the bus. So you better throw her under the bus so we don't throw you under the bus. And I just feel like it's sick. Now, something else with her. Um, she did get in trouble in 2019 for, I guess her son got in, in trouble at school for his grades and her um, boyfriend at the time and decided to discipline him and his way of disciplining him was to put him in a scalding hot shower um, and sit in him in a scalding hot bath and he suffered burns all over his body my thing is she's going to she's awaiting trial for that why should she be punished for this in relation to that Plus, for that alone, you know, like, I feel like that's his own case. Let her, and we don't know, that we don't know, like, it's almost like nowadays you're guilty until proven innocent. With that, we don't know. It's the reason why she's not with the dude anymore. What if he took that and did it on his own and she did lie about what happened, but she could have found her son, got scared. I don't, we don't know. And it's just so crazy because I've become a lot of people that I talked about. And so to see people just talk about people willingly, it's crazy to me. You know, like they look at people when they get in trouble, just like hard criminals. Rain. Oh, just like hard criminals. And that's not necessarily like where I am in my life. Like I've always cared about other individuals even the people in the wrong like i i still know that's somebody's baby that's somebody's grandson that's somebody's brother that's somebody's sister that's somebody's man so i always have like empathy towards people and i see that um i have this this video a few years ago that i put on youtube and it was basically talking about how i blocked the shade room because they they glamorized the demise of people typically the demise embarrassing things um and even the happy things and the you know accomplishments are overshadowed with negativity and sarcastic comments and people trying to leave the funniest comments so you know that's just a little bit about what activated my brain power to come up with like this girl talk video i don't have sympathy for anybody that did some illegal ish you know but at the same time, when it comes to credit and just our foundational structures, a lot of us start up on the wrong path, even when it's given to us on a platter. And this is beyond just a black thing, but people make mistakes. And a lot of things that these wheat people, wheat, we're gonna say wheat people are doing, when we do it, we get put under the jail for it. You know, so it's just crazy that she wasn't out here stealing from these people. These people were able to get credit and houses and be approved for things that if they would have did it the legal way the way that all the like credit reporting agencies and if they were to do it that way they never would have received the amounts and things that they did receive so it's just she got caught up but i feel like her injustice was more to the system than it was than the people and that's why i'm so like sad that she's getting so much backlash because i'm like nobody was complaining when they was getting these uh, uh you know credit approvals and everything else and another story that i seen recently was about um you know a mom she has a really close relationship with her daughter her daughter has a boyfriend and um she ended up going into the girl's car one day before she went to work and found some condoms in her car and she was just kind of disgusted. She was upset. She posted anonymously under one of the, the Facebook pages. Yeah. And she was talking about like, what, what should I do? Should I ground her? Should I what? You know, and my thing is, it's a very difficult decision when I have two little girls. Because of course, as a parent, when you're finding out that your children are sexually active, and that's a milestone that they went through, and it's almost like they don't share with you. So 
Is it them being deceptive because they they believe that they shouldn't be doing it and they don't want to share with you because of the backlash that they'll get from it? Or is it that, you know, it just, you know, like it's, it's that for me. I feel like as a mom, I don't want to be my kids' best friends, but when they go through things like that, I also don't want to be so guarded and um, structured that I miss the ability for them to communicate to me about it. Because in her situation, like, okay, your daughter didn't tell you that she was sexually active. You agreed with the relationship. You, um, you know, facilitated the relationship with her and her boyfriend but you didn't know like my thing is at least she was um intelligent enough to use protection i don't necessarily i feel like that's something to where if you ground if you ground your children after something like that that just like it enables the sneakiness it establishes the sneakiness because it's like okay first of all i didn't even tell you and then you find out because you're in my car looking for stuff of your because i don't i didn't get the sneaky vibe like she went in the car looking for stuff i think she really used her daughter's car and saw saw it and then was kind of just not expecting it however for me I don't know. I just would, I would, I would kind of be more offended than upset. I would be offended that I'm not connected to my children enough for them to share these moments with me. You know, like, of course, I never want my, my daughter to be like, girl, I did this and I busted open. Not never. I never want to hear that. But I, 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 I want her the same way when, you know, my daughter gets her cycle. I don't want her to go on Google and be like, oh my gosh, what is, why is blood coming out of here? I want her to say, mommy, oh my God, you know? So even if she doesn't tell me exactly when she does she can it, come talk to me when she's thinking about it, you know, at least she can, um, if she's not strong enough, we're, we're not gonna even say strong enough. If she, if it's kind of awkward and she doesn't feel so comfortable coming to me after she's engaged i would at least want her to come and talk to mommy when it comes to you know well i feel this way and you know like what happens when you have sex and when when did you know that you were ready i would want her to at least open herself up to being open to you know the talk the the talk you know I feel like with things with Topics like that and situations like that, if you push your child away, it comes with friends too. So if you try to tell your daughter not to talk to certain people and if you talk to them, you're going to get in trouble. It just permits them to do it behind your back. I'd rather be there and be involved in the process however I can be involved in the highest vibration possible so even if I don't like them as long as I know okay when you leave the house you're not leaving here pretending like you're going somewhere else so you can be with them and then God forbid something happens like I would want to at least be cordial about things that I even feel uncomfortable about not to let her walk over me and do, do what she wants but to give her the opportunity and the ability to see things for herself. So I might not let you go spend the night at this person's house. Or if you ask the, for me to drop you at the off at the mall, I might not do it with this individual. But at least if you tell me that you're interested in going to, you know, get closer to this individual or you want to go out with them or something like that, I can at least kind of have the ball in my court and choose what festivities I will approve of in also um encourage alternatives to things that don't sit right with me you know versus just shutting it down and having you say well we're going to it and Susie's mom is picking us up and then you really be in the back of the car with you know like that's just thoughts that's just thoughts and it very much resonates because I get it okay <laughs> lastly I just wanted to talk about all of the crazy shit that's been going on just like in general 
when it comes to family situations like did y'all just hear about the lady that was a mother of six all beautiful girls and the man stabbed her like that is crazy and when you think about it like these men that be having all of these girls like that's your karma <laughs> just i just wanted to put that in there men that have nothing but girls like you have six little girls this was your opportunity to break generational curses um to rectify any karma that you've created and to freely connect to femininity like you have not only six daughters that are females but you have a woman that you had six children with so i feel like even when relationships don't go the right way i don't know i feel like they're I, like i know that there's another way that that situation could have went in or the story about the woman that killed her children well she attempted to kill both of her children but she only killed one and it was because she was losing custody um losing her rights to them and so she killed them she's in new orleans and for me it just shows an immense lack of emotional control and i feel like that's why it's so important to not be so caught up in relationships not that we all don't deserve to have somebody or to be able to satisfy our personal needs however when a relationship is tugging at you emotionally mentally physically and it is on a pedestal when you have relationships on a pedestal when you do not take pride in your own alone time and the things that you bring you know to the table and your value when you don't love yourself it shows with the old dependence on loving somebody else or when that person restricts themselves from love when that person puts up barriers you have to be able to have emotional control and when you feel okay when me and this person can't talk when i can't get this person's content attention when i can't get a grasp on a relationship this is something that i have to walk away from because it has too much control over me you know it has so much control over me that I can't even put my emotions in the right place. Like, I have to remove myself from this, you know? Sometimes these relationships be up on a pedestal so high for us. And everything that we see is regarding that relationship. And when things fail with that relationship or if the ideas that we marry don't come to fruition some people lose it and they lose a grasp when they feel like something that they've been able to control for so long removes itself or is open to removing itself it's like losing control and people do these impulsive acts you know and that's it's a very scary thing for me so that's why i always try to tell women you know it's great to be a family it's great to want to be with who you have children with it's great to truly follow your heart in certain instances we have to also be logical enough to separate ourselves from situations that are they have control over us and emotional control and restraint you know like the girl that just uh killed the innocent people the six innocent bystanders but all because somebody did it doesn't know emotional control and they get behind a wheel and they feel indestructible or they get distracted or whatever her reason is and i'm so interested to hear what she has to say I'm not saying that it's gonna like replace anything or fix anything but i'm personally interested to know what her logic was in that moment you know if she's gonna be honest to us because you know a lot of times in the legal system People are more manipulative than honest because you're doing what can save you. You're not really trying to just, you know, directly tell things that can be used against you. But however, I'm just, I'm, I'm very interested in knowing what her logic behind it was. Now the results come out that she was not pregnant. I mean, she was not pregnant. She was not intoxicated. So what gets you to a level to where you get in a car and you're so irresponsible or distracted or just at a loss of emotional control that you allow what you're going through and the things that you're experiencing in your experience, the things that you're um, being tested with, you're allowing your experience to melt over into other people's experience because you lack emotional control. 
And I feel like we've all been, I was going to say a victim, but a suspect of that. I don't feel like it would be a victim, but I feel like we're all guilty of that, of lacking emotional control in some perspective, you know? But it's just crazy to see the dynamics of how it leaps, you know, and the range of how lack of emotional control and stability and emotional maturity can blow up. So to the mom um, of the kids, they, you know, she killed them and then went on, well, thought that she killed them and then went on social media. That is just a gory situation. The father was fighting for custody. He was telling them that he was, you know, that, that it's the legal process in general that's killing me now. Because he did what he needed to do to try to take the steps or make the steps to separate himself and his children. The same way that the woman uh, with the six kids that passed away, she had a restraining order or an order of protection or whatever it is it's called there. But she had that as well. And it's just, you know, the system, a lot of times, if the system doesn't necessarily fill us or protect us or um, take our complaints as credible or give us the runaround for our complaints to be valid or to prove our complaints as valid it's also control on our ends we set up the stuff and we get the people involved in our business and then we kind of get relaxed in our cycles again so we don't stand firm in the decisions that we make and really solidify separations you know from individuals that get that emotional immaturity that provoke that those emotional responses those erratic responses so that's just some some things that I was thinking about but I just you know it prompts me because I see a lot of places in my life where I lack emotional control at some places I see a lot of times where I also um am emotionally manipulative. So I will use my emotions or my responses to certain situations to try to, you know, manipulate the energy in general, take it as you, you want. But as a mother, it, it promotes me and pushes me to start to teach that to my children, to start to um, ingrain that into them emotional maturity and their reactions in certain situations you know I have two little girls one is two and one is about to be one in a few months and it's just very important that these lessons I teach them these are very important lessons for me to get across to them you know I would rather teach them than these certain trial and errors and these lessons and these tests to teach them I would rather instill that in them because I do feel like these are things um that are hard to teach after the fact these are things that once these become a part of your person once these become a part of your character once these are normalized in your reality emotional immaturity lack of emotional control it is so easy to go back to those things so these are just things that i've been thinking about recently i do want to share like some more tea because i'll be going deep into these uh stories but i just need to be better at writing them down so that i can give y'all the news how it's supposed to but i'll be all in the comments baby i'll be knowing what the news don't tell you so I hope that y'all enjoyed this girl talk. I love y'all for real. If there's any ideas, any messages, any stories that y'all want to talk about, send them in. I also have been doing some advice and uh, spiritual guidance on TikTok. So I kind of want to share some of that stuff on here. But I don't know how spiritual people are and how people will receive some of the things that I'm talking about. So drop below if that's something that you're interested in listening to. But okay, for the last time, I love y'all for real. And I just, I miss it here. I'm going to stop saying that I miss it here and we're going to show up more. We will. But drop below everything that you feel about this video, everything that you feel about the topics that I discussed, and drop some tea if you know some extra tea that I, I failed to mention. Okay. Bye, y'all.